All right, quick and easy question strategies. Thank you everybody for tuning in once again. This is fun time for me. I've done something, I've changed the format. I've shortened it. I was doing 30 minutes of just a professional learning experience workshop, then 30 minutes of the, the, the RK Child Show. But I, I, I'm really, I told you, all, I'm trying to be innovative and push the envelope. So I've shortened the time period. I'm trying to, I'm purposely compressing things. I want to see how much more efficient we can be with shorter periods of time. And again, if we want to dialogue a little bit deeper, we can go into a deeper level of understanding. And for the newcomers, I appreciate you watching. I got iPads, iPads, phones. I got a lot of different technology pieces going. So don't mind me. If you see my eyes wondering, I'm looking at a screen. I'm trying to monitor a feed. I'm working on getting it on Facebook. It was on Facebook the first day, but then after the first day, it's been crazy Facebook. So I'm working on getting the Facebook feed up and running because I want to be able to just like, share, like, and share it on Facebook. And that way we can get more people involved. So tomorrow, if you, if you know me, I'm a techie. It'll be figured out Facebook. It'll be figured out Facebook for tomorrow where you can even log on to my Facebook page and then go in the comments. If you notice something new down at the bottom of this screen, you have where it says the messaging feature. So you can message in real time. Just again, I'm throwing different things out there to try. I got the closed captioning going. I'm, I'm killing it. I'm killing the game. I'm killing the game right now. I'm throw, throwing myself out there. So quick and easy question and strategies. 15 minutes, quick and easy, quick and easy episode. And with this quick and easy mantra, then I'm going to start doing the Ask DRK Child Show where it's going to be more efficient. As I always say at the beginning of everything I do, because I work with so many entities, all my statements and opinions are my own. They don't, I don't represent anybody. Or I don't have any hidden agenda when I'm doing these things. So just get that out your head. Well, he's doing it because it is. No, I'm doing it because I actually love what I do. And interacting with people is one of the things is how do we build our field? You always start off with the goal. A lot of people are like, man, we, why we got to do these student learning outcomes every single day or the sw some places swap bot uh, students will be able to because we want to know what are we here for? If I know the title is great, but I want to know specifically what am I here for? What value am I going to gain? Knowing those pieces then it helps me integrate into the lesson a little bit more. So the focus today, I really just want to look at effective questioning. Then how do we use it to assess students? How do we use it to advance students' reasoning? That's it. No, nothing, you know, too fancy. Just how do we assess students? And most importantly, how do we use it to see how our students are performing? Like I said earlier, you're going to see me move around on different devices. I'm a multitasker. I apologize if you just jump around and seeing a bunch of stuff. This is how I roll. Like you come into my world, I have a lot going on in any given moment. But we're going to start off with this quote. I'm going to give you a minute to read this quote. And I really want you to internalize this particular quote right here. This is from the National Council of Super Teachers of Mathematics, Principles to Action, one of their better books. The, their best book, in my opinion, right now is Catalyze and Change. They have the high school version out. They're coming out the middle school elementary very soon. But this is from Principles to Action which came out, I think, about 2014. Take a moment, read through this quote. It's going to set the stage for our discussion today. This is the whole purpose of questioning. This is the whole part. We really want to see what do students know and how does that impact our lessons? How does that make us make our lessons better? But again, help students make sense of what we're trying to talk about. So we're going to talk about four types of questions, four types of questions, the gathering information questions, probing thinking questions, making the mathematics visible and encouraging reflection and justification. Four types of questions. This wrote comes from Bola and Brody and then Chapin and O'Connor. So they've done a lot of uh, research in the area of questioning and questioning strategies. I like how NCTM and Principles of Action, they kind of broke it down. Like they broke it down to make it a little bit more simple because I'm telling everybody, like I was on that bandwagon, teaching is complex, teaching is complex. But now we're really seeing with, uh, especially looking at different, talking to friends and social media feeds, how parents are struggling because teaching is complex. I totally agree. But we've gotten to the place, it's so complex and convoluted 
I think we're even missing just the essence of what it's all about. Like it's gotten so mundane and all this stuff going on, like the lessons actually, a lot of them are starting to suck. So what I'm trying to do is how do we simplify this piece? How do we make it a, more, a little bit more clear? And we still uh, research the practice lens, but it can't, it's, it's, some classrooms I go into is so theoretical at elementary level. I'm like, crap, what is this? Like some college level physics class? Like this sucks. Like we're not getting at the essence. So we're doing future episodes. What does all mathematics really mean? But we gotta, I'm going to, I know I'm probably one of the first ones. We got to start simplifying instruction. So I think we need to simplify and build back upon it. Cause right now I'm seeing more, unfortunately I'm seeing a lot of stuff that's um, not good as opposed to good. And I'm looking at these closed captionings. These are killing me right now. So if this closed captioning is not as good as it should be, I'm going to turn it off, but we're going to see how it goes. This closed captioning is horrible. Oh, it got that part right. So now let's look at it. First thing, gathering information, gathering information. These are your questions when you're just trying to get students to recall basic facts. All right, this closed caption is like throwing me off today, y'all. We're going to turn this off. All right, it's off. It was like, I don't know, I'm a, I am a perfectionist, so when stuff is not right, I can't deal with it. I'll fix closed caption later. So gathering information are just questions where we're just trying to get students to recall facts. These are your basic low-level questions. Hey, what formula did you use? Tell me what you did. That's all we're doing when we're trying to just gather information. Another type of question, I don't want to say the second type because I don't want you all to think they go in order. These are just different types of questions that we ask students. And we need to use our professional judgment which type of questions to ask students in which situations. The next type of question is probing thinking. This is where we're going to get students to explain, they're going to elaborate, and they're going to clarify. So what you're going to do to elicit this thinking, I like to say to students like earlier and in gathering information, I'm like, just tell me what you did. They're just going to read what they did. In this sense, tell me more about it. And when I say about it, whatever they did, I want them to go a little bit deeper than just reading their paper, but provide me, start to work on providing me a little bit of a rationale, just because my goal is to elicit a deeper level of thinking as it relates to the task that they're working on. But my job as a teacher is how do I probe this further? I have to probe further beyond they have a series of steps. This allows me to see, did they just get the answer right because they copied somebody or just luck of the draw? Or do they truly understand the material? The next type of question is making the mathematics visible. This is one of my favorite. We always talk about, you know, kids say it's in my head, it's in my head. I, I love your brain. I can't see inside your brain you need to make it visible. In this instance, the focus, I like to focus on student discussions. And you're probably saying, Chris, what do you mean by student discussions? If they're making the mathematics visible, why are they discussing? I want students to compare and contrast what they're doing with their, their classmates. In order to compare and contrast, guess what? They have to go beyond, do they just have an answer on the paper? They gotta actually be able to explain what they're doing. They're gonna uh, go back and forth. And that's gonna be cool because they're gonna see what are some similarities and what are some differences between the two? And this allows students to really see, and for me to see, what is that student really thinking in his or her respective bed? Especially when they begin the process of explaining their processes and justifying it. So with this one, to making it visible, the best move, I, anybody seen me, I love turn and talk. So in this instance, I love having, having students sit side by side or in groups and comparing and contrasting. This allows the things to come from the students. Um, my job is to build upon what they bring to the table. My job is not to, hey, I'm the teacher. You got to do what I do. For what? Like, for real? Like, it's 2020. Build upon the students' thinking. And the last type of question, encouraging reflection and justification. This is where you get to that depth of understanding from your students. Why, why, why? Was it, was it the Backstreet Boys? The NSYNC had a song. No, it was, is it Tell Me Why? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me why. Yeah, all right, y'all know what I mean. I want to get to the why at this point. Why, 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 why are you doing? So I love students are like, he going to ask me why I did it. He going to ask, yeah. this gets me to a deeper level of thinking. It's one thing if you can explain what you did. It's another thing if you can justify what you did. So going beyond gathering information, 
going beyond just probing, going beyond making it visible. This, when students can justify, that's when they really got it. Think about something you're good at. Like you could be the best dot, dot, dot. It's one thing for you to tell someone, hey, this is how you do it. It's another thing for you to tell someone, these are the reasons why. So we want to go beyond in regards to our thinking, not only telling me what you did, but can you tell me why you did it? All right. So when you're in this questioning phase, I've taken you through some types of questions that you should be engaging students in. Here are your teacher actions. We'll give you four teacher actions, four student actions. Then we're going to wrap up. So here are the four teacher actions. The very first teacher action, you want to build upon what students are thinking. As Thomas Carpenter once said, students come into the classroom with a variety of experiences. How do we build upon them? That's your job. You're a facilitator. So I look, like we need to rename teachers to facilitators. Your job is to facilitate discussion. It's not to just lecture. Oh, my gosh. So I, asked, I was talking to someone. I'm like, what did you do? I lectured my students. And I know them. They did lecture. But they need to actually facilitate a discussion based upon what students are bringing in. The second piece, how are you going deeper? You have to constantly keep going beyond the surface when students are explaining. Again, it's great to tell me what you did, but why did you do it? You really want to probe students' thinking and really get them to make sense. You want them to really make sense of what are they doing, why are they doing it? And then when they're doing those turn and talk pieces, like we said earlier with the making the mathematics visible, that's when we really see, do they really, really get it? Or do they you know, kind of sort of get it? You want to be intentional. Do not, oh my God, I, I talk about this somewhere else where people pull out popsicle sticks or randomly call on students. We want to be intentional with our questions and who we're calling upon. And it's not because he or she is right. It's totally based upon the value that the student brings to the discussion. So based upon what my students are going to bring to the discussion, that's how I'm going to call upon them because I've circulated and everybody's response has value. This is how we develop an inclusive environment. Everybody's response has value, but I'm being intentional. And this is the most important out of all of them, wait time. Man, I'm a high-flying teacher. I can teach you real fast. I go real fast. Sometimes, sometimes they understand what I'm saying. Sometimes they don't. I'm calling upon students. I'm doing this. I'm calling upon hands. I'm doing this, going back and forth. I'm saying, okay, my gosh, we got it right. Let's go to the next one. That's great and dandy. It's cool. Sound like an auctioneer. But how often do we provide students wait time? That's that thinking and processing time. We can't be spitfire. With, I know some people, I'm spitfire with the questions. That's great. We need to provide students with some wait time. When you provide students with wait time, that allows them to formulate what, what are they thinking, et cetera, et cetera. And it, yeah, it slows down your lesson. It really doesn't slow it down by a lot. P posing questions, pausing, giving students the opportunity to think about what they're doing and do some sense making. That's it. That's it. So what are your students doing? The first thing your students are doing, they should be reflecting and justifying. Like constantly students' brains should be racking in a mathematics class. Like, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? What am I doing? Why am I doing it? What am I doing? Why am I doing it? Because that's problem solving. Problem solving in mathematics, and mathematics especially is not just can we get an answer. The second thing, make students think about how they're going to present their response. I like to use it from the, think about a lawyer. Lawyers build a case for whatever their argument is. The same thing with students. Students need to start building a case for what they're doing. Uh, Chris in, uh, I may pronounce Chris's name wrong, Lesniak. I hope I pronounced it right. But Chris has some cool things with debate math. And it's uh, what's your claim, what's your warrant. And it's, it's essentially the same thing because students need to make a case for what they're doing, for what they're doing. The second thing students should be doing, they should be listening. You got two of these, one of these. Students should be listening to see what others are saying. And they need that's going to help them make those critical connections to how they're doing within the mathematics. And again, I'm constantly checking because I'm getting emails about possible questions. I get a lot of messages doing these things. And I want to make it live. Like, even though you all have the chat, people literally chat with me. I'm like, why are you texting me doing the episode and asking questions? Like, I know you got my phone number. Like, message me on the board. That's why I got this stuff up here. And lastly, students should be expected to explain, to elaborate, and clarify. They should know, oh, my gosh, they're going to ask us, what do we do? Why do we do it? That's a good thing. I was working my daughter's school. There was a gifted school, and they knew. They get, I got five. And the kid's like, no, don't tell me you got five. They were like, why? Because he's going to ask you to explain how you did it. This should be an expectation. 
All right. I plug every episode, the Inspire Educators podcast. Yes, this is cool. Check me out on video. Check out my podcast with Miss Lila Noor and Mr. Jadrian Grimes is even cooler. We got a new episode that's posted bi-weekly. Today's episode just dropped. Schools are not ready for crisis, the impact of the coronavirus. Ooh, it's a dope episode. It's a dope episode. All right, this is Women's History Month. I'm highlighting outstanding women mathematics educators across the country. Today, I'm highlighting Tracy Cohen. She's a teacher in Georgia. She has a Twitter, but I don't know if she like really wants to Twitter out there because she kind of uses a name, but she don't. I know what her Twitter is, but I don't, I'm not putting it out there, but I'm putting her out there. She's a third grade teacher in Georgia. She's an innovator, highly engaging. She is an amazing, amazing, amazing educator. I'm trying to get her to present at NCTM in Atlanta. Yes, I'm putting her on blast. When NCTM comes to Atlanta, she needs to be a presenter. She, she is one of the, and you all know, I see a lot of stuff. She is a dope and amazing educator. Like, boom, like drop the mic. Like she's a, she's the deal. Uh, amazing educator. Question of the day. I told you I'm going shorter. I'm going shorter. Why? Because I want to be clear, succinct with what I do. And in workshops and traditional settings, we can go all day. I can talk math all day. I can talk shop all day long. And this, this one, question of the day. What is your favorite question to ask students? Everybody has like a go-to. Everybody has some in their pocket. I used to have index cards when I first started teaching. And I pull out my index card and read off questions. True story. So with that being said, everybody has a favorite question. What's your favorite question to ask students? Post it in the chat below because like I got a chat. I'm, I'm refreshing the chat. Like somebody going somebody gonna to say something in my chat one day. But once we get on Facebook, it's going to pop. But what's your favorite question to ask students? It can be any question that you have. Let's connect every day, Monday through Thursday, as long as we're on this extended break. I'm bringing some workshop topics, short, sweet, to the point. I could go longer, but I, I want to. I like them short and succinct. And I don't know about everybody else. A lot of people are relaxing, like getting breaks. My schedule is literally getting packed. Like I'm like, how the heck is everybody else chilling? And my schedule, I love it. I love it. That's packed. Don't get it. I, I love it. That I'm busy, but man. But so this is cool. So it's, that's part of the reason we shorten it. Just because we got a lot of other things going. But this is great. Let's keep it going. How do we develop our students? to become problem solvers and not rule followers. It's dope. Nice, quick workshop. I told y'all I get you in and get you out. So now, check it. All right, so am I the only one that puts on the Apple Watch and forget like turn the power on? That's just me.